A.C. Laker. Well, Raymond Illingworth was in the side, and he's the subject of the video on this occasion. And uh, it's not really a This Is Your Life, but uh, it does take me back, Raymond, to 1953 when we had some great tussles starting then, and they continued for you right through to the time you got the Ashes back in 1970-71. That is right. In fact, I remember the match you played at Bradford because that, that was the only match I didn't play in '53. Uh, in fact, uh, they had roaring fires going. It was that cold. I did play against you then later in the season at Bramall Lane, but uh, I remember what a cold match that was at Bradford. Well, uh, this is something I've written, so it's uh, not going to be anything new to you. But I've got you in a bracket of captains with uh, Keith Miller, which may surprise a lot of people because Keith only captained New South Wales and not Australia, and Mike Brearley and Ian Chappell, against whom you played in 1972 when he came over here and uh, we always had marvellous tussles great to watch and great to take part in let me take you back first though to uh, another match that uh, apart from the pressure provided by australia england clashes another match that might have provided you with a little bit of pressure 1972 benson and hedges final Yes, I can remember that very clearly because it was against my old county, Yorkshire, where I'd just left to go to Leicestershire. And I was probably more nervous during that match than any other match in my life. Not just because we were playing back against Yorkshire, I don't think it was that so much. Uh, the fact that I'd gone to Leicester in 69, it got to 72, and we'd been building up a side amongst these young players with one or two experienced players like Ken Higgs and Graham McKenzie, the Australian. And I felt that if we could win that particular match, we would then go on from strength to strength. But if we didn't win that one, we could be back to square one again. The fact that we did go on to win the Benson Edges that day, we then became a very, very good side and won further trophies. And I'm sure it all involved around that particular match. And this was part of your captaincy thing that you'd started in 1969. And uh, you weren't actually coming to the end of your career, but this one must have been a real highlight for you. Yes, it was. In fact, I did eventually go out of the dressing room, I think, when uh, we bowled Yorkshire out for somewhere in the region of 140-something. And I think we were about 90 for five, if I remember rightly. And I thought, crack, we're just at that stage now that anything goes a bit wrong here. And Chris Bolson, in fact, another Yorkshireman, played extremely well. And Paul Hayward took us through to victory, and uh, it really was a tremendous day for me. A triumph for Railingworth and for Leicestershire. Fan of the match, the Gold Award went to Chris Balderstone. Well, now, Raymond, that was 1972, but let's just go back to your first stint of captaincy in 1969 for England. Eventually, you captained England 31 times, but there was a little bit of good fortune in the fact that you became captain and a little bit of ill luck for another player. Yes, uh, I often I ask the selectors sometimes if I'd ever been captain of England uh, if I'd not gone to Leicester and been made captain at Leicester, and they always said yes, they were going to pick the best side and the captain from it. Uh, I'm not sure on that one, but uh, Certainly, uh, it was an interesting situation. At the start of the season, Colin Cowdery was batting and uh, he ruptured an Achilles tendon, which was bad luck for him, but it proved to be my good fortune. And I went ahead then and I captained England against uh, West Indies in my first series. And uh, a tough side, the West Indians, that year, but you were up at Old Trafford for the first game and uh, got away with a victory. First yes, up. We, uh, we won the toss, we battered and uh, we got a good score of 400 and I think around about 23, somewhere at that mark. And then we managed to bowl them out and we bowled them out a second time, only needing about a handful of runs, somewhere around about 20 to win, which I believe Jeff Boycott and John Edwich knocked off. So it was a great start for me. And there were some excellent performances there. Not only uh, Boycott and Edwidge, who did well in the first innings, but Gravely and Dolivera got runs and I remember that as uh, a very valuable partnership. And then Snowy and David Brown did the right thing for you with the ball. Yes, uh, there were two very fine bowlers, uh, different types. Uh, Snowy, the wayward genius, shall we say. But David Brown was a really big-hearted trier. But they both came up trumps on that particular day. And as I say, from then on, we just went from strength to strength, which was tremendous. And a real thriller at Lords, where uh, you had to make over 300 to win. Finished up as a draw, but it must have been even more heartening that uh, you were able to avoid being beaten there. Yes, it was a tremendous match because uh, I managed to make 100 myself at Lords, which is always nice. Uh, I was left on 97 not out, I think, over the weekend. Gary called for drinks with about 20 minutes to go, I can remember that very clearly. Yes, it was a real thriller and we're going to join it at 255 for 8 in the England innings. Raymond Illingworth is on 39, the bowler is Shillingford. That's a good stroke and that's beaten Clive Lloyd and it's come for 4, he's fifth 4, up to extra cover. Pays that stroke well, goes up to 43. England 2.59 for 8.
pin. Another nice stroke. Square this time on the offside. Nicely picked up there, running around the boundary by Charlie Davis. And a lovely throw. He's a very good fielder. One of his brother Brown's watching down in Glamorgan. Perhaps he's actually on the field at the moment. This is the 35th over with this ball, so not very much shine on it, although John Shepard's trying to keep a bit of polish on it. Oh! <laughs> And the appeal for a catch of the wicket, he's given out. Caught by Findlay, off Shepherd, Brown then out for one. And England now 261 for nine and only John Snow to come. Going for that off drive, getting outside edge. Disappointed man. Two runs there for Illingworth. Been three of his half century now. Well, I think this is uh, three. He's bowled three bounces now. Holder in the over. We're going for a run. Oh yes, and in quite easily too. Taking railing with onto 49 now, and it's the end of the over, and he's got the strike. As is 50. Railing with his completed his 50. And I would imagine this is the fastest 50 of the six that have been played and scored in this test match. Holder from the pavilion end now, bowling to Illingworth. Illingworth is 56. That one well, very well indeed. Four runs. That's his fifth four. Takes him up into the 60s. Eyes test score by 10. Hilda Dwillingworth. And he's hit that one away for four too. I think it'll get there. Yes. Maurice Foster, the fielder, substitute for Sobers. Oh, and he's dropped in the gutter. Gibbs. A very good fielder normally, acting captain here instead of Sobers. One-handed stroke by Ellingworth. We'll see what Shepard can do from this end. Bowling to Illingworth. And he's tickled that one. He'll go for a second. I think Frost are running in. Illingworth running very well between the wickets today. Good to see them going for that first run so quickly. There's normally a second one down to Longleg if you do that. No shine on the ball now. This is the 52nd over with the new ball. And he's hit that one well down to the mound, stands game for four. That's his seventh four, he got hold of that one well. Takes him up to 78. Good ass for it, he gave it the treatment. 298 for nine. Hardship worth 37, just short of the hour. And another fine stroke, up to third man. Two more runs to Lingworth. And the 300 up. And for the top score with 107. And he's hit that run again for four. Down to mid wicket. Loose over this from Shepherd. Illingworth goes to 84. 10 off that over.
311 for nine. 50 partnership between John Snow and Raymond Illingworth. And out of that 50, John Snow has made only two. It's a great shot. They're on the track to Gibson, smashing it away between extra cover and middle. His tenth boundary in this innings, and he moves now on to 94. Fine shot there by Ray Illingworth. 318 for nine, and time for just one more over, I should think. Six runs short of 100. The question is, if this is to be the last over, is he going to make an all-out effort to complete 100? It's a fine stroke. Snow looking for two, and he'll take it, giving Illingworth the strike. It's a good throw, but not good enough. 96 now to Illingworth, and looking for his 100 in this last over of the day. And end of play. Raymond Illingworth, not out 97, three runs short of his first century in Test cricket. His highest score before today was 50 against India some 10 years ago. John Snow, not out two. 321 for nine, and the children rushing the ground to applaud Illingworth. And a great day there for England, pulling out from 40 odd for four to 321 for nine. And Wonderful appreciation for Ray Illingworth there. Being mobbed by all the youngsters on his way back. I've never ever seen him play so well, and particularly in a test match. Deserves this great ovation he's getting. Uh, but then the game built up very nicely. Gary did in fact battle a bit on the last day and left us 300 and well, about 30 to get somewhere in that region. And we were in with a good chance, going well. And uh, in fact, right at the death, uh, in fact, I made one of my uh, Few mistakes regarding running people out. I did actually run John Hampshire out, another Yorkshireman. Uh, my mistake, I hit the ball to cover, and once he'd gone, then we really were out of the hunt. But it was a good, uh, a very good last day's cricket. Well, England, in all, needed 332 to win. At two, though, 198 for three. Shortly after, 201 for three, when Lance Gibbs came in to bowl to Philip Sharp. The situation was that they needed another 134 from 20 overs and 25 minutes. Lovely shot, four runs. Oh, a it's a fine shot. Cut very, very fine. Shillingford will cut it off. And it's Sharps 50. And what a good innings it's been, too. Just what was needed in this England innings. Oh, what a lovely stroke. That's the shot of the day as far as boycott's concerned. Yes, the stroke being well applauded there. It really was a classical shot through the covers. So it's Shillingford now coming into bowl to sharp. Oh, that's a fine stroke. Just took that one to the square leg boundary. Four runs to Phil Sharp. Really has played splendidly. It's a lovely shot. Beautiful time by Sharp. Just a pace or two down the pitch and hitting it into the outfield. And I must say that that's rather surprising, sitting watching the game all day, Dennis. It's the first time I've seen anyone do that into the untenanted outfield. The umpires signalling to the scorers that from this point onwards, 20 overs must be bowled. So England at the moment need 104 for victory. They've got to score around about five and over, and I would think, Dennis, it's extremely possible. And they've got seven wickets in hand. It could be a dramatic finish. A slip in a gully for the faster bowler Shillingford. What a lovely shot. No need to chase that one. Sharp really in great form here this afternoon and playing a tremendous innings for his side. A young man who hasn't made many runs in this series so far. Uh -huh, that's a fine stroke. 
didn't hit that one wide of mid-on, but he hit it straight down the ground, and he now moves into the 70s. They're all valuable runs, although they came off the edge there. Just the three runs there, Shillingford, the fieldsman. now to boycott and he must take it there even the misfield yes he'll get that one with Lloyd misfielding Hilda going for the ball so boycott has made his hundred Sobers who although he's got this hamstring injury has already bowled 24 overs Yes, he struck that one. There's no one down here at long leg. That will be a four up to the pavilion. Gibbs doing his best. Field pretty deep on the offside. Could take a quick single. Boycott is caught. He's caught there in front of the square leg umpire by Butcher. Butcher making the catch, boycott, court Butcher, Bill Shillingford for 106, and England 263 for four. 263 for four, still needing these 69 runs with 13 overs to go. Sharp to bat, he's 86 not out, he's only been in just for the 100 minutes now. And he struck that one hard and high, and it may go to the mid-wicket, it's going to be caught by Davis, yes, he's caught it. Running round, Davis catching it in front of the grandstand, and Sharp is out going for a six. Caught by Davis off Sobers for a magnificent 86, and England needing still 61 to win are 271 for five. Well, I'm sure the pavilion's going to rise to Philip Sharp. Yes, that was a truly great innings, Brian. Especially a chap who's been so much out of form these last few weeks. He came in when England badly needed it and played this great innings and the crowd giving him the reception he richly deserves. Going for it, Hampshire won't get back, he's going to be run out. Hampshire is run out. Well, that is disaster for England. Hampshire scattering up that pitch, going for what could have been a single, being sent back by Inningworth, and he simply couldn't get back and an easy run out, Frederick throwing to Sober, so the position has changed dramatically, 272 for six, and now I would suspect that England might well give up the chase. It's off the edge, but it's valuable runs, four of them. So six off this over so far. A great little improvisation there by Alan Knott went down the wicket, saw it was a bit short, but still managed to sweep it round a fine leg. Four most valuable runs there, six off this over. And the tension mounting here at Lords now. Forty-six runs now required for victory. Six overs and two balls. reached the 300 mark now for the loss of seven wickets first wicket went down at one that was John Edridge 295 for seven there was one over to go and the players have decided to leave the field that uh, seems to me a rather extraordinary performance Jim Surprising anything can happen in a cricket match, Richie. You know, there was three wickets to get, there were six balls to go. I think I would have gone all the way if I'd been in the West Indies position. 
Nice position to be in, Raymond. You won the first at Old Trafford and a real good tough draw at Lords. Now up to Headingley, your home ground, and uh, the third of the series. Yes, this was a good test match. Uh, it was a green wicket to start with, with the seam bowlers really on top and the batsmen really struggling. And uh, the wicket gradually got better and better uh, towards the end of the match and eventually uh, wanting about 300, just over 300 to win. Uh, West Indies certainly went to well past 200 for three wickets. And I always felt this was probably the best I ever kept in a test side. And in fact, Ray Robinson, the great Australian writer, sent me a questionnaire asking me certain things that I felt at certain parts of the day. Because it, everything I seemed to do that day turned out right. And in fact, we did bowl them out on the last day on what was really a very good wicket. And I felt that was my best ever match as captain. Well, we're going to join it at 219 for three. Derek Underwood is the bowler, Basil Butcher is taking strike in all West Indies need 302 to win and asking and given just touching the glove rather than the bat and it's the fourth wicket down West Indies 219 for four caught not bowl Underwood the second delivery that Underwood has turned appreciably in the last 20 minutes and Butcher out from 91 and that makes things interesting, Dennis. Yes, it certainly does. I must say it was a very, very good ball from Derek Underwood. He flighted it. He got Basil Butcher out there a little soon. And the ball turned, hit, deflected off the glove. 84 then needed for victory. And here comes the West Indies captain, Gary Sobers. has him again and that is the wicket England so desperately needed 224 for five a very casual loose looking stroke the inside edge and onto the stumps we can see it again now Barry Knight Sobers the batsman inside edge his back foot still on the crease not sitting completely attacking field for Finlay only 79 runs needed by the West Indians for victory a lot depends on their temperament whether or not they panic Basil Dolivera is down here at long leg but he's got no chance of cutting that off leg buys flicking Finlay's pad on the way through Great test of temperament this on both sides. England suddenly back in the game with a real chance. Two wickets falling for nine runs. <laughs> got him! Yes, put behind Alan Knott. And look at the jubilation from the England side. And what a turnabout. 219 for three. 224 for five. 228 for six. Well, you couldn't ask for two better bowling changes than that, could you? Barry Knight replacing Brown, getting the wicket of Sobers, Illingworth coming on for Underwood, and with the last ball of his over, getting this most vital wicket of Clive Lloyd there, caught behind by Alan Knott, trying to force the ball away off his back foot. I think, without a doubt now, West Indies are back on the defensive. It's almost a case for Underwood slowing down his pace a little bit, giving the ball a bit more air looking for this little bit of extra turn. I don't think he's going to be hit into the outfield by John Shepherd. And it's the seventh wicket down. Shepherd looking most surprised. Must have been caught behind. Alan not taking the ball. And the seventh wicket down for 228. The West Indies now need a further 52, still with three wickets in hand. Shillingford and Gibbs, the batsman, to come in. David Brown from the far end. Hold of the batsman. Hands apart on the bat, very low grip. Phil Sharp, it's the wicket England wanted. Eight wickets down, and David Brown, the man to gain the breakthrough here. Holder. Court Sharp, Paul Brown for 13. Here's David Brown coming into Holder. Good length ball, just outside the off stump. 
A faint outside tickle and sharp moving very quickly over to his left there, taking yet another fine catch indeed. Oh, what a good catch. Yes, fine catch there by Alan Knott. The ninth wicket down. David Brown concentrating on the off stump there for Lance Gibbs. Nine for 255. I thought that was particularly good judgment there by Alan Knott because it was a very thick outside edge and it certainly wouldn't have carried to show up at first slip. Not moving well over to his right, actually took it almost in front of, of Phil Sharp and did exactly the right thing. 272, 31 needed for victory. Perry Knight the bowler. And it's the win in the series for England, 2-0, to nil, having won the first and the third test match. The win today in the third by 30 runs. Well, that certainly was a good start. Then you had the rest of the world matches, and you took the side out to Australia in 1970-71 and brought back the Ashes. We'll come back to that later, because I want to talk to you now about the 1971 season, where you had Pakistan and India over here, and that was after you'd beaten the Australians. Yes, uh, different series altogether when you get uh, Pakistan India, because you do get more spin bowling coming into the series, and uh, they are pretty good batsmen, most of the Pakistan Indian sides now, so it was always going to be an intriguing series, but a different one to play against the West Indies. Well, in that Pakistan series, the first match we're going to look at is uh, back at Headingley, and it's a situation where Pakistan need 231 to win. Ray Ellingworth is the bowler, taking strike is Aftab Gul. And he's gone, so <laughs> you could see entirely what Aftab's instructions were there. Anything up, he was going to try and hit it over the top. Probably a little bit early in the day to do it. Only succeeded in reaching Robin Hobbs at mid-wicket. So an important psychological blow in this contest. This wicket coming in just the second over after five minutes play. So one man come over from the mid-wicket area. So I'm just leaving... Hobbs and Amos there. A deep square leg, three on the off, a slip. Illingworth to Zahir. And that's it. Caught first ball. That ball turned and lifted. So Illingworth on a hat trick. Zahir, the hope of Pakistan, out. Caught a short leg, first ball. So what a game of cricket. Everybody thinking this was sewn up really for the Pakistan. He's only wanting 205 this morning. They've lost two wickets in successive balls, both to skipper Ray Illingworth. Down the wicket, driven firmly, fine shot by Sadiq, first four of the day. Good, sound, solid on drive, used his feet nicely to that, it was tossed up a little bit by Gifford, just gave him the opportunity to get down the wicket to it. Tickle away down the leg side, so that's going to be four. So a slight tickle and at long laps, Mushtuck is off the mark. So an expensive over this. At least it's expensive in terms of what we've already seen this morning. And great concentration here from Railingworth. I remember seeing that face at Sydney when, in the last test match, when he bowled England to a great victory. Real concentration. Well, that's four runs. Fine shot by Sadiq. Toss that up once again. That's the strength of this left-hander. Clipping it away on the onside to mid-on and mid-wicket. That's bringing up the 50 for Pakistan. And some brighter and more cheerful faces now. The Pakistan camp, 53 for two. Now, Illingworth again. To Mushtaq. Hello, he's out. Is he out caught? Yes, a nice catch there by Edrich, just in front of square. And Mushtaq, a really valuable wicket for England to get. Three down for 54. And Mushtaq caught Edrich, bowled Illingworth, five. Side Ahmed was next to go. 65 for four at that point. He was caught Dolivera, bowled Gifford. That's it. 
That's a beautiful stroke by Sadiq. The first real stroke of the morning. Straight drive over the top of Railingworth's nut. Four runs into the football stand. That's gone over two. That's four more runs to the mid wicket boundary. See, the ball was well pitched up to him again there, and he gave that one a very, very forceful nudge. I see he's looking to swing it away. He's coming down here to this boundary again. Blinding, of course, Alan Knott with that sweep and giving him little or no chance at all. Four buys. It's four runs. So the point there of Illingworth bowling over the wicket to the left-hander, of course, as soon as he does drop it short, Sadiq has got these big wide open gaps on the offside of the field. So give it to Sadiq. Slip, silly point, two short legs coming in over the wicket. Down the wicket, driven that firmly too. Fine off drive, four runs, used his feet nicely there. That's off the edge, and that's going down for four runs. Sadiq on 47. Oh, that's a fine stroke for his 50. Just in front of square on the offside. And here they come to acclaim the feet. A fine shot by Asif coming down the wicket. Four runs. He's hit him over the top. Bold stroke. Hit boycott will. No, he just lost it. That's a fine shot. Four runs. Dolivier didn't even bother to pursue it. And that was a stroke that Asif applauded. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> what a nice sight. <laughs> oh, has that his out stumped? He can give an out stump, pushing forward to Norman Gifford. And Alan not certainly producing what was needed then for England. Perhaps a little bit close to Gifford at mid-on for absolute comfort, but another brave stroke. Fine hit over the infield. Four runs smack into the fence under the pavilion. Much to the liking of Pakistan supporters. A oh, superb shot, four runs. Ellingworth dropping only fractionally short there. And Sadiq onto the back foot like lightning and hammering it through the covers. Oh, and another one. Moving down the wicket this time. Beautiful on drive. What a superb performance by this Pakistan opening batsman. Never been allowed to be bogged down for too long. And there can't have been many better innings in Test cricket in recent years. The odds stacked against him on a turning wicket. Here he is now, 89 not out.
And that's out. Good catch by Richard Hutton. Intikab playing slightly across it, but an outside edge. And it only just carried to Richard Hutton, but he snapped one up like that in the first innings. So it was a fine catch. And that's it. And he's got another one as Oliveira. And that's the wicket they wanted. Sadly, looking to push it on the leg side. Slightly slower ball, mistimed, and a very simple court and bowl for Basil Oliveira. Beat him again, and a big appeal for a catch, and he's gone. So Lever doing the trick this time for Hutton. Yes, in fact, the, the delivery before was the better one because it was much straighter. That one was outside the off, started outside uh, the off stump, and swung away. Oh, and that's it. Must be it. Yes, he's out. Caught behind. Another wicket for Alan Knott. Well, that was another fine delivery from Peter Lever at swung away and also lifted. And here's Peter Lever, who's just taken two vital wickets with the new ball. He's coming into bowl now to Pavez. And he's given him LBW. And that's it. So what an ending and what a finish for Peter Lever. He's come back there, he's taken these three last wickets. He's seen England through to victory.